Welcome back to Out of the Rough. I'm with Mark Emmer, the author of Intended Consequences, Designing the Future You Wish to Create. Uh, now, Mark, I want to talk about um, the mood of the entrepreneur in this environment. You know, what is the general mood of the entrepreneur in a terribly challenging, um, maybe slower market than they're used to in the past? Right. Well, I think uh, the most important skill set that business owners bring to their business every day is not their experience it's their optimism and um, employers are going to pay attention to how they show up so it's very important that the entrepreneur every single day charge the hill in terms of the value that their company is creating because um, as salespeople are, are being oriented towards discounting, it's more important that the entrepreneur be the cheerleader and the champion within the organization. And you hit something that I think is critical, and that is, that's what this country was built upon. It was built upon entrepreneurs, hardworking uh, individuals coming in, using the land, our great land, uh, to grow, to, grow uh, to build, um, to discover. And I think that's so important is our attitude. Attitude is everything. When you go in with the right attitude, you get people excited about being there in a tough environment. And let's face it, people have been beaten down over the last two or three years. So they need that internal champion that comes in every day and keeps them motivated. So what are your thoughts on how businesses can grow in this economy? Well, I think that uh, what most entrepreneurs think about in terms of growth is kind of the, the sexy markets like uh, Starbucks or when Circus Soleil first came out with, with their version of, of the circus business uh, where uh, an entrant penetrates a white space. But I actually think the best place to look for growth is, is always in markets that are directly adjacent to the one that business is already in because that's where they have the less, leastest risk. So an example of that would be Honda. Mm -hmm. When um, they first grew, grew um, globally, their core competency was in, in making um, efficient engines. So when they grew, they grew from automobiles into motorcycles, marine, and jet. Um, but then what we're seeing today is we're seeing a lot of vertical integration as a growth strategy. So vertical integration would be, for example, we just saw Google buying up Motorola, Coke and Pepsi are buying up all the bottlers, uh, Boeing and GM are buying a lot of their suppliers because what companies want to do is they want to be able to participate and profit both downstream and upstream. Yeah, like, and they're close to it. It's a smaller gamble. You know, I was talking to somebody, and it's a small bets. Taking the small bets and having those pay off versus trying to hit a home run. Right, exactly. Yeah, and that's that. Technology. Technology's been a big piece. Um, investing in the future, and there's so much to know about technology. Tell me your take, how that's critical in an emerging business. Well, you know, they, they have an old saying in poker. If you can't find the sucker in the room, it's probably you. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. okay. And, and so, um, and I think that's true of technology. I think that... Um, if you are not ahead, you're probably behind. I have several clients that they decided not to make the, the big bets in technology two or three years ago. And um, say you're a 50 or $60 million business and you want to implement a, an enterprise system, that could take you six or 12 months. So if you're not ahead, you're probably behind. Yeah, and you need to get, you need to get on it right away. Sales, has the sales environment changed? Yeah, I think immensely. I think what's happened is a lot of salespeople have, they've been beaten down and they've been conditioned to, to discount very quickly. And so I think what entrepreneurs need to do is they need to be out in the market and they need to be talking to customers themselves and they need to reorient salespeople back to consultative type selling where you're out and you're asking customers those real strategic 20,000 foot questions because that's the only way you're ever going to be able to decipher what their fundamental business problems are and deliver solutions that, that wouldn't be so commoditized. Now you talked about two things I want to touch upon that I think are really important and that is getting out of your office and getting out of that comfort zone and going and shaking a hand with your client even though the client's been a client for 10 years you can't take it uh, you know, for granted plus you get a lot of intel on what challenges they're faced with. It's a definitely a you know huge and a different market, and I also believe and, and tell me your thoughts that those that are providing services within your company that aren't considered sales are maybe your best salespeople when they're dealing with their customers. That's right. Everyone needs to both be uh, facing with the customer and consulting within your company. But uh, back to something else you said. I think it's very important that the, the company own the customer relationship and not the salesperson. So 
especially kind of the old school salesmen, where they keep their customers very close to the vest, and what happens is if they leave, that relationship goes with them. So it's important that uh, within every business-to-business -business relationship that there are several uh, touch points, peer-to-peer -peer type of relationships, information's kept in a central repository, those kinds of things, so that the, the relationship is, it continues to deepen over and time. And it's not all about that one particular salesperson or one particular department. Right. Let's talk about small business owners and them competing against the big corporations who, let's face it, have, have access to, to cash, have access to many more resources than the small entrepreneur. How, is, how are you able to create a level playing field so the entrepreneur can compete, so you can compete in, in, the, in the marketplace? Well, I don't know if it'll ever be level, but um, what I would tell you is the fundamental difference between small businesses and large businesses. If you look at, say, the Fortune 100, most all of them are business to consumer brands. So they're able to scale up very quickly and they're able to address a very large market. Most small businesses are business to business. They are, they are maybe vendors of those Fortune 100 companies. And so I think the opportunity for them is to find the way that they can scale appropriately. So for example, um, too many businesses I've seen, they try to offer cust custom solutions. And there may be a place for that. But for a lot of other businesses, the sweet spot where they can actually be profitable is when they can offer products that can be configured as opposed to customized. So, um, you know, if you go into Panera Bread, um, they'll give you an option soup and salad or soup and sandwich. So try to provide options to your customers um, that you can scale to remain profitable. You know who does that? Um, Starbucks. There's thousands of options of how you can get your coffee. I just want my coffee black and take it out one type, but you know, you, there's someone for someone who wants sweet, someone that someone that doesn't want anything. I mean, there's so many different options, and uh, and that goes to that um, intended consequences. Design the future to create uh, your future by Mark Emmer. Uh, your your firm specializes in management consulting when it comes to strategic planning. I know you're an expert on it. Thanks for coming on the show. Very involved uh, with the community. Thank you for all you do. If someone would like to get your book or, or reach, reach you, how can they do that? Well, as far as the book, the easiest place to find it is online at uh, barnesandnoble.com or amazon.com or on our website, which is optimizeinc.net. And uh, they can certainly reach me there as well at optimizeinc.net. Thank you very much, Mark. It's my pleasure. We'll be right back. Uh, on next, we have Tanya Mori on one of the most exciting new waves of fundraising for your organization.